Yo, what's going on, Nomads and Drifting Podcast listeners? Welcome to Backspace Nomads, episode 21. On the pod today, we're going to be reviewing the early access platformer Dead Cells from Motion Twins. After that, we're going to be talking about a uh, kind of small uh, convention, E3. Maybe you've heard of it. I don't know. Finally, we're going to be wrapping the show with a discussion about gaming mo- movies and which franchises need to be in film. Monica, how, how have you been? I haven't seen you in a little bit. Uh, I've been really great, um, and by that, I mean really busy, but that's good for me. I enjoy that. Mm-hmm. Um, this week was just like, I'm not even going to get into it. It is just, I could go on and on and, <laughs> and turn this into a 24-hour uh, podcast. Yeah, we only got an hour. Of just so. some rambling. I know, I know. But um, I did have a really weird dream this week. Uh-huh. Um, I know, you know, uh, some people like hearing about others' dreams. Um, some people fucking hate it. Um, <laughs> for the people that hate it, this one's for you. Um, so I, <clears throat> I had a, a, a leak. Uh, there was this wall, this wall in my house that I didn't, it wasn't my actual house, but there was black water coming out of it. So I called a plumber. Nice. And uh, the plumber came over and and was like you know there's these are evil sources <laughs> there's like a like wizard this was from a couple days ago so i can't remember all the details yeah. but there was some like warlock that was after me and so the plumber's what? like we got to get out of here and i was like how are we going to get out of here and he's like through the pipes and i'm like what dude did mario come into your and dreams was, kind of but he didn't have a mustache. He was clean shaven. Nice, professional. Um, but he did. He, he. But he was because we did jump into the pipes. He was like this pipe, and he like opened up the cabinets <laughs> underneath my kitchen sink, and there was a green pipe there. No, that I could jump dude. Into. <laughs> there was, there was, and I'm like, I don't think I would fit into that. I know I'm skinny, but I don't think I could fit in. He's like come with me takes my hand we jump in oh wow and then like i was falling free falling it was crazy um the warlock was after me i don't really remember every element of the stream so i'm not even going to pretend like i did yeah um but at some point um i had i ate mushrooms um, with this Mario plumber man <laughs> um, and he told me they were baby Bellas yeah. and they were not nope. they were hallucinogenic mushrooms he tricked me and then I found out he was the warlock who was the warlock up, Fucking... the plumber Bill Cosby <laughs> <laughs> yeah so anyway uh, dreams I think I think I spent the night with Mario I think that's what that was nice so you're I'm pretty sure you're the princess peach of your dreams yeah how exciting to be on the podcast obey me obey me <laughs> <laughs> how about you how was your week uh pretty good man just a, a standard week i this game we're reviewing dead cells like completely engulfed anything gaming related i was doing i had planned on uh, completing the Overwatch event and doing all this stuff, and then I started playing, started playing Dead Cells, and everything just kind of got absorbed into that game. It's all I was thinking about for a few days. So, like, that's it. It's Dead Cells was uh, all consuming for me for this week. Uh, all right, well, let's get to it so that you can talk about your thumbs down, because I'm assuming based off of that, you're going to be like two thumbs down, oh, right? Yeah, I'm a very critical yeah, reviewer. You're like, I- like yeah. <laughs> I understand my obsession, uh, my obsessions aren't for everybody. I'm critical about it. I take a step okay. back. All right. Uh, mm-hmm. So let's jump into that review for Dead Cells. Dead Cells re- was released May 10th, 2017. You can pick it up on Steam for 16.99. Developed and published by Motion Twin. Dead Cells is an indie roguelike Metrovania action platformer. You'll explore a sprawling, ever-changing castle, assuming you're able to fight your way past its keepers in a 2D souls light combat. No checkpoints. Kill, die, learn, repeat. Monica, what were your expectations going into Dead Cells? Um, <clears throat> so we've, we've played quite a few platformers um, on this podcast as well as I just have played a lot of platformers and I'm I'm a little burnt out on them honestly so my expectations into this were not very high I uh, 
I, you know, I watched the trailer. Um, from the trailers, I didn't really get a good grasp of exactly what all was involved with the game. Sure. Uh, so I, I was just almost expecting that um, I wasn't going to enjoy it, um, but that I would power through it and give it a, a serious review. You know, um, so that's the, those are my expectations. <laughs> really low. Yeah, really low. Uh, for me, I, I, once we like kind of, I've seen this game getting hyped up on like YouTube and stuff, and a lot of people are playing through it. So I knew going into it, I, I was excited to start playing it uh, because I've heard so much about it. And then just the first impressions of the artwork and like the color palette just kind of explode at you when you start looking at this game. So I was super pumped to get into this game. And uh, I, even though like we play platformers, I don't think we've played a platformer in this vein. So reading about mm-hmm. how it's like kind of like a Castlevania thing, I was excited to get to like try a game out like that again. Uh, yeah. So what are the things, some of the things that you liked about Dead Cells? Okay, so uh, I have to say that. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. In fact, I had a difficult time coming up with three things I wasn't as much of a fan Mm -hmm. of. Um, But jumping into something that I really enjoyed was the weapon system. Yeah. I thought the weapon system was amazing. There is... I know that this is... um, It's early access, right? Uh, Yes. It's it's very... It is early access, but it's a very complete early access. Right. So um, with that, I felt that the weapon system already had an incredible um, amount of content Mm -hmm. with it alongside it and the fact that it's early access I'm just like where are they going to take this Um, I I thought that so basically when you're playing you can um, pick up different types of weapons and kind of customize your character um, based off of the stats for like health skills Mm -hmm. and what's the third one I forget Uh, skills health and strength strength right um, and then you can have different um, tools that go into uh, those categories. Mm-hmm. Um, there are new weapons that you find within the game and can unlock, um, and that's kind of how you start completing your uh, catalog of weapons that you'll you can unlock and switch out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought that that part was really really fun. The the weapons are creative. Um, and just kind of cool to collect. I yeah. mean, it's fun to find and them. Like, like, it's it's exciting. They just run the gamut. You have things that are, they call them meat grinders, which are just like saws on the ground that like uh, really just attack enemies. You can drop turrets. There's, you know, for your personal weapons, there are hammers, javelins, swords, like, mm-hmm. and like various swords, like flame ones, ice ones. Whips. Whips, like electrical whips and stuff for all you freaks out there. This might be the game you've been looking for. Uh, I'm glad that's you... what I like. That was I like that electrical whip. <laughs> Heard that. Uh, so I'm glad you brought up the weapon system because I think that's like one of my favorite things about this game is the weapon system, but in the way that it takes a very challenging game and it allows you to beat it in your own play style, in your own creative play style. Uh, right. I had the funnest time in this game going through different builds with the weapons. Uh, you know, trying to figure out if I'm going to, you know, play a control character where I'm trying to freeze people and attack them with bigger weapons or play more of a kind of a glass cannon where it's just all out offense or even with the turret system and the meat grinder to play a very skill based person uh, character where I'm just using my utility to complete levels. And I think that's like a massive strength for this game. Uh, right. And especially like. Like, Binding of Isaac, I guess, is, like, the best comparison to this game from what yeah, you're I doing. Yeah, uh, This is a Binding of Isaac Castlevania platformer. Uh, the amount of combinations that you can create with the weapons and stuff is mind-blowing. And I played this game for probably, like, 10 hours, uh, which, believe me, for my schedule, that is obsessed, to be able to fit that in for 10 hours. Yeah. Uh, yep. So... I, I can't wait to play this game more and see how much more you can do with the weapon system. Uh, what's something else you liked about this game? So one of the things that I ran into that I thought was uh, really interesting were the curses. I think that that's the, what you would call the game yeah. element. Where you can open up uh, a chest and um, it will provide you with 
items, gold, and and like extra items, but you get cursed. Mm-hmm. And I thought that that was really really fun because it adds this. If you're having you you don't have to open this chest up, but like if you're having a an easier time with the game, you can make it more challenging. Yeah. Or more risk taking yep. with the curses. It's, it's a gamble. So, right, it is. It is a gamble, and I thought that that was really fun. Um, I am by no means great at the game, um, but I am an idiot, so I just <laughs> go went ahead and took the. <laughs> uh, but I went ahead and took the uh, the curse at least once, and just immediately died after. Um, but I I thought that 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 was a really unique aspect to the game, something that. Um, adds this additional layer, mm-hmm. um, and that's that's kind of how I felt this game. Like, there's just so many different dynamics as you're going through these levels that um, that change how you have to play. Mm-hmm. And the curses is another yeah. one. You know? Yeah, yeah. I have this great story where like I was having at the time it was like the best run I ever had. I, I had like such good items, my stats were rocking, and I didn't realize, but there the locked doors that you can pay to open with your gold. Uh, you can break those open and attack them. And if you do, that puts a curse on you. And so here on my best run, I accidentally did it. And then I had the curse why I had to kill 40 enemies without getting hurt, hit to lift the curse. And like, it just, I made it about, I don't know, eight enemies in and it just, just, I got destroyed and I had to walk away from the computer. I was really upset about it. Yeah. Uh, something else I really liked about this game has to be the art from this game. Uh, to call it a retro pixel game is to kind of undersell it. Its main selling point is its pixel art, but the lighting system that they incorporate into it, uh, this is like, I don't know how they do it, but the pixels in the world as as it's moving and like parallaxing, it starts to cast shadows and these like blooms of light on your screen. And it is just absolutely gorgeous. And like the color palette is gripping uh, and the whole time, like every level you go through, just adds another layer of beautiful art from this team. And I never got bored with any of the level design, any of the enemy design. Everything seemed fresh. And I played this game, like I said, for 10 hours, and I never felt like it was stale. Right. I actually, that that's the on my list here uh, weapon system curses and art style. I, I think I would be really. Um, messing up if I didn't say how how fun it is. I just feel like every element to this to, to Dead Cells mm-hmm. uh, there was time and effort put into it um, from the, the weapons from the um, just like the UI of the game yeah. um, from the background, from the characters from the enemies. The art is is unique and it's why why is that though because it to me it was almost like the characters are your character almost blends in because of the the color palette right but he's still unique i don't know it was almost he's definitely almost i think your character is using colors that aren't used elsewhere in the game there's not a lot of beiges or greens in this game and that's what your mm-hmm. character is mainly uh rocking and so he, there, you're able to stand out, and he's got that big light on the top of his head that they, they shine with right. the lighting system. So it's just, like, so smart. Such a smart way but to do that. he blends in, too. I feel like he blends in, too, in a mm-hmm. way that I really liked. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, art style was definitely 100% on my list. Yeah. I think the last thing for me would just have to be the kind of control system and how the game felt, like, so crisp. Everything was responsive. Every movie made felt like it had a purpose. There was no lag between anything you're doing. And if there was delay, it's kind of meant to be the gameplay element. Like you're using a hammer, it's going to take a little bit longer to swing. If you're using daggers, it's going to be absolutely fast and a a biting attack. And that really lends itself to like the overall design of the game and how fast they want you to play it because there are speed run elements to this game built into it. And I don't think that you can get something that good without a control system and a game running so crisp. Like, the programming in this game is just as well done as the art system. You just kind of can't see it. Mm-hmm. All right, let's move into some of the things that we did not like about Dead Cells. Where are you at on this? 
Um, I wonder if you're going to argue with me on this I'll one. I'll argue with you about anything. Just let me know. Okay. <laughs> so I felt that the music felt out of place. Um, I'll agree with that. I didn't dislike it, and I also didn't think that it drew away too much from the game itself. But it felt out of place, it, it, like heavily out of place. At I would love to argue with you on this, but I, I'm the same way. It's on my list. The music doesn't necessarily – it's not necessarily bad. It's just kind of lackluster and, be like, very forgettable. Uh, mm -hmm. Thinking about the music in this game, looking back, I just can't remember it. I don't know what was playing. And we mm -hmm. just reviewed Rhyme, which was such a huge uh, music. Like, the score for that game was so massive. And maybe that biased me a little bit. I don't know, but I, I agree with you. Music in this game was not uh, wasn't on par with everything else going on in the game. Uh, what's something else you didn't dislike about Dead Cells? Um, so the enemies, <laughs> not not the way that they looked, and not the um, abundance of them. Um, but more so the fact that they can hit you and see you through almost everything. And mm. I don't know if I was playing it differently, but like when you're using some of your um, like skills or bombs, you can only um, shoot from the floor that you're on yeah. or the level that you're on. But the enemies can drop crap on you from wherever and i just don't think that that's fair how are, they sh how are they shooting their bombs through walls and doors and you can't even drop one below you i kind of agree with you on that uh that's not something i had on my list but you do have a valid point there you cannot cross over uh kind of levels unless there's a big gap in the floor but those dudes, there are multiple enemies that throw bombs and missiles at you through walls, and that is frustrating. You are completely right with that. Yeah, man, they mess me up all the time, <laughs> and it's very infuriating. Um, so yeah, the enemies um, in, and I, I guess along this is, I guess this is my last complaint, mm -hmm. and it's but it still has to deal with enemies. Um, I know that there are different types in the game. Um, you know, I have less time in it than you do Brian but I felt that some of them felt a little bit repetitive in comparison to how how unique the weapon system is um, and, and how many options there are with the weapon system I felt that the enemies it just kind of didn't feel like I was running into a lot of new types right I, I could see that they are kind of pulling on different the, on the same elements but just in a little bit different ways I think uh, mm -hmm. I, I do see that I think that maybe that adds to my next point. What I didn't like about this game, uh, it's just that the very, especially the beginning areas of this game. Even though everything felt fresh and like good, in terms of art, what's actually going on, what you're playing through, does get a little bit repetitive in the very beginning areas. Uh, you do die a lot in this game, so you're just playing through those starting uh, levels so many times. And I don't think this game is as randomly generated as. Uh, you would think, and like Binding of Isaac, there definitely seems to be a certain set of uh, levels, and then like you get a, one of those random levels. It's not like you're walking into completely new areas. And I was just listening to an interview with the people from the who did Rain World, and that guy was talking about how he did over eleven thousand different levels. So that like, they weren't randomly generated, but every th every time you played, it would be different. Like the level designer put the work in to do that. Maybe eleven thousand is not the right number. Don't quote me on that. But he he made it sound like it was just a painstakingly long uh, procedure for him. And they did not do this in this game. Uh, right. You do go through the same areas. You're hitting the same notes, and it just gets a little bit repetitive. I got one more thing I didn't dislike about the game. Are you kind of finished up on that? Yeah. Uh, this isn't something I disliked about the game. It's one of those missed opportunities that I feel I see a lot in games. Uh, I wish you could, like, adjust more of your character and add more, I guess, armor pieces and rings and stuff. I, You can adjust, like, the amulet you're wearing, uh, the two types of weapons you're holding. And I wish there was more of that for some reason. I, I think it's because, like, I bit off just a little bit and I wanted, like, the whole sandwich. 
if you could change more than just your weapons and what necklace you're wearing, I feel like the game has so much more potential in that area that they're kind of missing out by not going down that road. Mm-hmm. Well, it is an early access, so yeah. maybe they'll add that. Hopefully they will. If they're listening to this, uh, I, I, I'm going to make this game, I'm going to make you millionaires. Just add armor pieces. You guys got this. <laughs> Uh, final thoughts on Dead Cells for you. What you looking at? So what's crazy is I think, you know, maybe with the hectic aspect of my schedule right now and everything else I've got going on and my initial expectations of this game, um, I pretty much did a, a 180. <laughs> I really think that this is a fantastic game. I think the price point is right on. Yeah. Um, I, it's definitely worth that price point. Um, and after, you know, after I played, I started, I wanted to see, like, what other people, obviously Steam has, I think it's it says mostly positive or, like, very positive or whatever mm -hmm. um, reviews. I wanted to see what other people were saying. And a lot of people were saying that this, especially because it's early access, so sometimes people feel frustrated. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people were saying this feels that their expectations of this um, are this could be like a Darkest Dungeon early access game. Right. In the sense that Darkest Dungeon performed, they did a great job of keeping the community um, update, you know, updated mm -hmm. um, and involved with the releases of new content. And I hope that takes place because I think that this is, it's already fun, it's already worth the 16, but, um, but a finalized version of this game is, is worth I, I, hours and hours upon hours of gameplay. Yeah. So I'm a thumbs up. I'm kind of the same uh, vein as you, like 16.99 for this game. I've gotten 10 hours out of it already, and I already tell I want to keep going back to this game over and over. I don't, mm -hmm. you know, I've beat one boss in this game so far. There is so much more of this game I haven't seen and that I want to get into. I do, like, they are constantly updating this game. They updated it while I was playing it. Like, on uh, the next day I jumped on, there's already new stuff in it. This development team is on point. They love the game they're making. They love the community that they're making it for. And I think everyone should be a part of it. This is might be one of my top games I've played uh, in this year, definitely. And I mm -hmm. think it's the best game that we've played on the podcast for me so far to this oh, point. Yeah. It's a... Uh, Ooh. I am in love with Dead Cells. Um, I, I'd put a ring on it. You know, it's I'm, wow. I'm there for it. Uh, wow. So Dead Cells released May 10th, 2017 for 1699 on Steam. Developed and published from Motion Twin. We're going to jump to information real quick. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about E3. Stick around, everybody. Thank you for uh, sitting through that intermission, everybody, on this half of the podcast where you're going to be talking about E3 and what went on at it. Also, we're going to be talking about games that we think should be adapted into movies. Before we get into that, E3. Monica, the <laughs> biggest gaming event of the year. Woo! E3, E3, E3. <laughs> you got yourself pumped for that? Uh, yeah, I tried to. Um, I remember sitting there watching uh, the Xbox reveal, and I started. I got. I started getting a little excited. I was like, "Oh man, that processor looks pretty good." <laughs> but it's... my computer can still do that. All these things. So um, for real though, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone um, gets so excited about the PC, and we're just, or about all the consoles, and we're like, "Yeah, we already have graphics that good, dude." Like <laughs> yeah, yep. Um, but, and then they were like, we have like 50,000 Xbox exclusives. <laughs> and then uh, most of them are coming out on PC too. So I was just yeah. like, well, I guess I'm not getting an Xbox. <laughs> For real. Like, way too many exclusives this year at E3 though. Like, if you're not a PC owner or Xbox owner, Xbox owner, you got like shafted. I don't know what kind of deals Microsoft is cutting, but they own, like, half of what came out at E3, dude. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so the EA had the EA Play as their big conference. EA, I think, has some of the most awkward uh, moments at E3. This was a pretty underwhelming E3 in terms of like, awkward moments. Uh, people have tightened up, and it's not as weird as it used to be. E3 continues to deliver on the awkward scale. <laughs> it is so weird. Uh, this year, the big focus was using uh, influencers, right? Uh, where, where before, developers usually come out to pitch their game, and you're hearing from the game developer and the lead director and all this stuff. No. Now you're just going to get some uh, YouTube people who aren't used to being in front of this big of an audience. Oh, and God, there were yeah. some awkward, like, flops. Uh, the One of the big YouTubers, Jesse something, he came out and just had that, like, panic moment that you dread when you're doing public speaking where, like, you just – you forget your lines and you awkwardly laugh. <laughs> like it was so uncomfortable to watch. Uh, I think the big takeaways from E3 stuff is kind of all their sports games are starting to get developed into RPG stuff now, uh, which I guess you're welcome to the rest of the gaming world because us RPG nerds have like suffered through really bad times of RPGs to mm-hmm. bring the best of it to uh, Madden. Uh, Battlefront 2, the new uh, Star Wars game. Did you see any yeah. of that? No, I didn't. Uh, the, it's just, Are you excited? I'm not. You know what? No. <laughs> you, you have seen Battlefront 2 if you've seen any of Battlefront 1. It's oh. Battlefront 1 with like a little bit more polish on it, a little bit like shinier lights and stuff. They're adding uh, you know, all the generations of Star Wars and now every era is going to be in the game. You get your Darth Mauls fighting with Yoda. Uh, yeah. fighting with Kylo Ren and Rey now. Like, it's all in there. That's a big selling point, which it just... It seems like a really good DLC package. I think right. the, the most awkward thing is they had a whole bunch of YouTubers go over to EA and, like, test the game out, and they, they call them game changers. And it's just... These people had zero influence on anything that gets put out in this game. I don't care what they tell you in their, <laughs> like, prepackaged reels. Like... Uh... Other than uh, EA, the next one is Ubisoft. Um, I kind of feel like... Ubisoft. How do you dude, feel? Are you getting enraged? Is your blood be- starting to boil? I am. I am, like, getting enraged how you do with, like, someone you love. Because this is when Ubisoft has, like, started to pull me back in. And I don't understand why I started liking them again. I, it's like the relationship your friends tell you not to get back into. Yeah. And, like, I'm there. I looked at e- e- uh, Ubisoft's press conference, and, like, I just – I enjoyed it. They have so much good stuff going on. And I'm like, why do I – seen their I seen their stupid logo that I hated, and I seen all the game <laughs> developers. The yes. Yes. But then all the developers started using it in, like, their trailers and stuff and, like, putting their own elements on it. And I'm like, oh, that looks really nice. It looks really great. <laughs> this is so good. I love it. I love it so much. Um uh, do you remember Beyond Good and Evil, uh, the Xbox game? Uh-huh. They, Beyond Good and Evil 2, they released a trailer for it. It looked mind-blowingly good, except for the caveat there was no gameplay in it whatsoever. This is a fantastic CG rendering, like a Blizzard-style uh, cutscene. It was massive. The world they're developing for it looks amazing. This game's been in development forever. I don't know why they haven't showed us any gameplay at this point. I'm talking over five years or something this game's been in development for. That's worrisome. But the world they have thought about for this game looks amazing. Yeah. It's a like it's a multi planet deep space exploration. The world building they have in it is just fantastic. Uh of course, the big highlight from Ubisoft's uh is Rabbids plus Mario kingdom battle did you check this thing out yeah it looks great it looks so good i am a big fan of uh the raven rabbits and uh i it just looks really cute like every also the fact that it's kind of a a different type of game um in Mm -hmm. comparison to any of like the uh, Mario or Rabbit games I've played in the past. It's kind of mm-hmm. following an XCOM feel. Um, I'm not Very a much huge XCOM. fan of XCOM uh, personally, but I love the Rabbit so much. I think I could get into this. It is one of the best like m- like merging of worlds I think I've seen in forever. 
it definitely feels like uh, Mario and XCOM and the rabbits kind of went to a house party together and they took a few mm-hmm. too many drugs and they all made this <laughs> like beautiful like creation together somehow and birthed this like oh weirdly gosh, you know cool what? game. What? It really does seem like that. Like yeah. they're just all on a bender and they're yes. just trying to make it through. Like Mario has like Mega Man guns now. Like where do you pick those guns up? Like yeah, they're just like, what's going on? We're crazy. <laughs> um, the trailer though, everything about this just it made had me smiling. I yes. mean, it just it really seems like it's going to be a fun game. Uh, interesting about this too. This is like the first Mario game developed outside of Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's somewhat interesting that Nintendo kind of would let that happen. In uh, a big departure from the Mario series, uh, did you ever play Mario RPG on the Super Nintendo? No. Oh, uh, that was a massive highlight from my uh, youth, where uh, Nintendo let SquareSoft de- develop an RPG for them. I am that alone makes me want to play this game. Just seeing like Mario in that world in another type of gameplay setting, other than a platformer, mm-hmm. is definitely a big win. Uh, the other small thing from there, there was a trailer. I, I think a little bit of gameplay of Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed Origins. Uh, I don't know the last time you played a Assassin's Creed game, but it's been a while for me. So it's been a while, and I just I will. There will be no hype for me no? in regards to this game. Um, I would have to have it come out, and I would have to let people settle into it, and then see what they had to say before I got excited. I just feel like Assassin's Creed has gone so flat. I know people yeah. feel that it's been it's picked up, but for me, I'm just not. It, I'm not there yet. Um, I, I'm definitely kind of the same boat with you, man. Like the the series just like fell off, got a little repetitive. They're taking this one and setting it back in um, old and Egyptian times, kind of when the first assassins were uh, calling themselves that. That's like the big like slug line from the trailer. Like they're calling themselves assassins. It's like ooh. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. definitely it, it feels less stealthy than the other Assassin's Creed games, uh, which is weird. Uh, but you know, we'll see. I don't know. I, yeah. I I fall in these traps with Assassin's Creed, which I'll probably play it because of the uh, Egyptian lore. Uh, Nintendo's press conference. I think Nintendo may be the uh, biggest winner for E3, dude. Uh, listen to all these things coming out on the Switch this year. Metro Prime, a brand new Metroid game. Mm-hmm. Fire Emblem's Warriors, where they're taking the Fire Emblem series and making it like a Dynasty Warriors type game. Yeah. Mario Odyssey, which looks bananas. <laughs> a new uh, Harvest Moon game, which I don't think is getting released this year, but a new Harvest Moon game, which when's the last time you've seen that on a console? Uh, it's been ages, and I am stoked. I love Harvest Moon. Right? Harvest Pete. I mean, he was even on our blog post. I yes. put him on the blog post as one of the most attractive male Hunkiest protagonists. Men. He's a hunk. He's a big he is. hunk. He's a farmhand. I, I can't wait to see him plowing my fields. I'm glad you finished that with uh, your fields. Uh, <laughs> the next one is uh, Pokemon RPG. <laughs> a legitimate Pokemon RPG is be de- being developed for the Switch. That's like six games. I am That's completely awesome. buying a Switch this year. Yeah. I don't know when it's going to happen. It might happen before I trek out to TwitchCon, so I have something to do on the plane. Mm-hmm. But this Mar- like Nintendo just delivered with gaming content this year. Uh, I think the kind of biggest loser, if you want to put it that way, is Bethesda. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they did anything wrong. It's just it's kind of an off year for Bethesda. They don't have any brand new titles coming out. This isn't the year where they explode, but they still put on like their Bethesda land, which is their theme park within E3, where it's this big to do with carnival rides and stuff. Or, but like what they brought to E3, uh, Skyrim to the Switch. Meh. Yeah, I think Skyrim's literally been at every E3 since it was announced, coming to a yeah. different platform. Uh, and their big selling point for Skyrim is that they their links in the game. Wow. Exciting, huh? I can yep. get a mod that does that. <laughs> and speaking of mods with them, they announced their creation club, which they will take, uh, people can pitch them mods, and then they will bring those developers in-house to Bethesda to create those professionally, and then I believe release them paid instead of a free modding content. Mm-hmm. So there's still going to be free mods out there, 
but the best of the mod world for Bethesda games are likely to be starting to fall under a paid for content. Yeah, uh, which I'm not surprised I'm, by that. No, and it's not exciting at all, but uh, maybe that's how we get these mods that Bethesda kind of puts a season to assist on, is this is their system. I don't know. Right. Uh, so there's nothing like really new. I guess the cool thing for them, other than what we've talked about, is the VR releases. You're going to be able to play Doom and Fallout 4 in a full VR setting. I don't want to play Doom in VR. Who does? That's too scary. Dude. Like, we're trying to play these games to relax, Bethesda. Yeah, it's fucking horrifying. I barely want to go through Doom sitting down at my computer with the lights on. Uh, I, know. I don't need to be in VR. Yeah. Jeez, I can't even imagine that. It's just going to be imprints of my body on the walls from me, like, <laughs> flying backwards and screaming. Yeah, you're going to have to, like, nerf your whole room before you get into that. Yep. Uh, so, other like, that's pretty much the big wrap up room for me, three. Uh, I think... I was kind of underwhelmed by the indie games coming out of E3. There wasn't a massive amount of indie games being talked about, and I think this kind of has to do with the public being led into E3 this year. Uh, Mm -hmm. The public's kind of drawn to these bigger, flashier games, and I don't think the media outlets were kind of focused in on the indie games like they normally are. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that means for E3 as a uh, convention or for gaming as an industry like i don't know if that's good or bad to have right. this big of an event where these developers release like their big hitters be fully open to the public without like a business day where the people who know what they're looking at like reviewers can understand a game when they go in and see oh well they don't have these parts in the game but we know that can be changed before release right what are your thoughts on that do you think that's like good or bad that e3 is now fully open to public? the public um i think it's exciting i you know it's the first year so i guess let's just see what happens i maybe they didn't deal with it well this year but Mm -hmm. um you know a lot of people in general were saying e3 wasn't as exciting this year it felt a little um something left to be or something left to be desired so Mm -hmm. i i guess you know i I don't have strong opinions one way or the other um, at the current time, but I'm interested to see, you know, what's up next. Sure. I think they're hurt by, like, PAX. PAX does such a good job at, like, yeah. putting these games over, making gaming the people who play games feel more important than uh, kind of we are to, like, society. Like, it's gaming is the thing, mm-hmm. whereas E3 does feel a little bit more businessy and, like, everything gets so awkward and cringy at these big conferences like mm-hmm. i'm just, i don't want to let, like anyone to watch me watch e3 because i'm just sitting there like putting my head down like oh god like why are they doing this e3 <laughs> uh so that's e3 for the year not not a big overwhelming thing i'm, I'm kind of underwhelmed and i i think that might i don't know if it's because i'm so busy right now in my life or i'm just not into e3 like i was when i was i don't know 15 or something it's weird Oh, it, it, did, it did seem there were there were moments that that felt exciting and then the reality hit you know like like i was saying at the beginning of this with um xbox you know it's like oh wow this looks so wait a second <laughs> i have a computer oh 50 i think it was 57 it was either 47 or 57 exclusives mm-hmm. what do they have oh most of these don't look exciting at all to me. Yeah. You know, or I can get them on PC. So I, I think there was just a lot of that happening. You know, it's just like the moment that you start getting revved up, you realize that you're not going to be bamboozled this time and you come back down to earth and it's a lot less exciting there. I agree with you. Uh, so let's move into our next topic for the pod games that we think should be made into movies. Right. So, Video games have been made into movies for ages. I mean, I remember, um, you know, getting going to the, the movies with a couple of my girlfriends to watch Tomb Raider, Ooh. and just thinking Angelina Jolie uh, might be the one that that turns the tide for me. I don't what? know. She's. I was like, you're looking pretty fine there, Laura Croft, Angelina. What's going on? 
my, my, my young body doesn't know what to do. Um, but, you know, there's there have been so many movies out. Silent Hill scared the crap out of me when I saw mm-hmm. that. Um, you know, Warcraft, which came out in 2016. Dude, I was I was not a big fan I did of not that go see that at all. There's no way. <laughs> people were so excited and people really did like it. I was not a big fan no. of it. But you know, video games have been been turned into movies good and bad for, Do you remember for ages. Mario Brothers like way back from the 80s? Uh yeah. No. That let's not was not even talk about. That. Good lord. You know, <laughs> like what were they thinking? It had nothing to do with Mario's other than like some weird looking uh, like dudes are calling Koopa Troopers or whatever. Yeah, it was almost the equivalent of my dream. It's like <laughs> that's how loosely related it was. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but uh, you know, I do think that like not even just g- video games turning into film, but there have even been films just about gamers. In yeah. Fact. Do you remember the film Gamer? I don't think I've ever seen the film Gamer. Oh my god. I was so excited when that movie was going to come out. I was so excited. Um, it is uh, each... Okay, I have to read this. It, Gerard Butler's in it, uh, which I had a huge major what? crush on him. Do You You don't you don't know who Gerard Butler... Oh, I right. know he is, yeah. Uh, okay, please. he was in the it. The heartthrob? Yes. yes, the heartthrob Gerard Butler. He's also in the second Tomb Raider. Is he going to be the one doing, that turns the tide? Doing, Oh, he switched it back in the second Tomb Raider when he's doing the, the um, pull-ups yeah. on the top of his cage. I was like, a man can do that? <laughs> but uh, each week, Cable, a death row... Each week, Cable, a death row inmate, battles his fellow prisoners in a violent online game called Slayers. His every move controlled by a young gamer's remote device. To the players, what? Cable, and the other inmates are just simulated characters, but to the resistance group that opposes the game's inventor, Cable is a critical component of their plan to end the inventor's form of high-tech slavery. So basically, they just tre- created, instead of, like, it's like if the characters that you were playing were real when you were fighting. Right. Right. So it was so bad. Good it lord, was, that sounds awful. It but you know how excited I was about that that film? I was stoked for it. Just and think then of I the chin-ups alone. I know. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, you know what my most embarrassing be- one is? Dude? What? Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within. Did you ever see that? Yeah. I dragged my entire family to that shit stain of a movie. <laughs> and I, like, as a kid, a young kid, I was so pumped for this because it was, like, the mm-hmm. first fully 3D movie sitting there, like, a flush with embarrassment my face is completely <laughs> red like i can't believe i'm making everyone just do this like oh there's so many and i feel i feel like a whole lot of games don't translate well i mean silent hill i feel that that was a pretty yeah. good horror film i mean uh, some of them some of them do better um i like the resident evil films they're kind of campy in a way but like they're they're yeah. very watchable enjoyable on some kind of level yeah yeah for sure um there are also just a lot of games coming up, or a lot of, of uh, games that are going to be adapted into movies. You have mm-hmm. um, talks of Far Cry, Witcher is going to be uh, oh, a film. Witcher on Netflix, can't wait. Yeah. They've been well, yeah, or, right, a series. Um, you know, God of War um, has been talked about being adapted into a film since I think like two thousand and five. I was ex- so excited about that. I don't know when it's going to happen. It's not off their radar. They're still talking yeah. about it. But, like, how Dude, long? How long I'll wait in do line I have for that. to wait? I know. Um, so there's just a ton of, of movies already coming out. Um, random ones, like Tetris. They're trying to turn Tetris <laughs> into a trilogy. I don't even science, know. I don't even know how to deal with that either. How are they going to fit that one together? A trilogy? Oh, how are they going to fit that one together? Jesus what? Christ. What? Yo, oh, God. I'm just... No? That's Good not allowed? Good. That was great. Right. Um, but yeah, Sorry, I, I didn't mean to clear your head there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Tetris, uh, okay, like, what are we going to do with that? I don't know. Maybe I'll love them. Maybe it's going to overtake Lord of the Rings for me, you know? <laughs> the epic. <laughs> the epic. The epic. You just got a bunch Tetris. Of... 
a bunch of weird shit like uh, shapes uh, crossing a mountain. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, I can't even imagine. Um, Monster Hunter is another one. I that mean, would there's be cool. just yeah, yeah. There's tons and tons of games that they're talking about, and this is becoming more and more. Uh, you know, people gaming is is a, just now a huge part of our culture, and it's yeah. easily it's it's easily transferred into film, um, just as much as books have have been. Mm-hmm. So I'm really excited with this direction. I'm excited to see so many upcoming video game movies. Uh, for 2017 and and beyond um but we decided we were going to pick a game that we wanted to see turn into a video game yeah and um i'm going to start off with mine i guess let's go um it was actually turn. it there is an anime for it but xenosaga oh uh, yeah i just feel like cosmos as played by a human would be so sweet, and I also feel like that science, uh, that sci-fi genre can be done so well with the graphics and everything that we have available to us now, the technology that we have available to us now. I would love to see Cosmos in human form. Yeah, no, I think you're completely right. That uh, it, the stories there, all the pieces of it look iconic. Just I could see a movie trailer or like yes. a poster, just like with like the big shadows of what's going on in it. Yeah, yeah. So I just think Xenosaga would be a great um, addition to video game movies if they did it right, of course. Um, if they, if somebody wants to pick that up and have me, you know, help uh, <laughs> push everything in the right direction, I'm ready. You can call me. Um, yeah. But no, I, I really feel like Xenosaga would be would be mine. Especially since so many of the games that I already love are being turned into movies. So. Yeah, it's, it's hard for me because like, I have one in mind. I, I guess I'm just going to go with it because this isn't something that was treated as a production and then everything's fallen apart. There's no longer any kind of director or actors tied to it. But th- like, I can't get away from this thought in my head where I would just love to see Mass Effect made into a movie. I think yeah. that... It is a massive like you could absolutely do a trilogy with this series. Uh, it's sci-fi. It's deep space. It's everything I want to go to a movie to see. And not only that, like all the settings, right and amazing, and, and the visuals would be outstanding. But then you have uh, probably cinema's future uh, like character you want to try and like emulate, Commander Shepard. Can you imagine a uh, a Ryan Gosling? playing oh, commander you're, shepherd you're uh, staffing huh i'll fan cast this for you mm-hmm. and he is just the quietly brooding war hero on board the normandy and then uh who's the person that voices joker uh seth green i think oh the yeah that, that does well, he, i don't know i think it's seth green i think that's his name uh it's the guy that does like robot chicken he's already an actor and you can play him in the movie <laughs> this is already lined up. I already have things working and in motion for Mass Effect. I don't know why they can't put a director on this. I don't know why they can't get a cast together or a script. Yeah, well, they've been talking about doing that since 2010, but um, it hasn't gotten anywhere past – it hasn't even been written yet. I guess there have been I think multiple they have like writers a, Like a involved. loose script? Like, yeah, like multiple I could, writers I could write have been script. involved, but um, none of them have – formulated anything (laughs) worth a damn apparently um it just seems like this is going to be you're going to be teased with this for a really long time until you're ready to burst bud well butter my biscuit (laughs) because i am ready for mass effect jesus your biscuit may be buttered (laughs) in the next 10 years Uh, if not you know hopefully in your lifetime playing the long game yeah, the long con. <laughs> so, uh, well, definitely let us know, you know, f- for our listeners out there, let us know what games you're excited about um, in regards to video games turning into film. I mean, this is something that we haven't touched on heavily in the past, but there are so many good games out there. I had a hard time coming up with mine. I, Ryan, yeah. Uh, like, 
Brian didn't have a hard time coming up with his, but they're having a hard time actually creating it. I know. <laughs> um, but, you know, let us know. Um, you can give us a, a follow at Backspace Nomads. Tweet us and let us let us know what uh, game would blow your mind. Hit us up on form. Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to do it for episode 21 of Backspace Nomads. Thank you for tuning in and listening, everybody. We'll catch you on the next pod next week for episode 22. Bye.